Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. Huge show, Super Bowl week. We have the man who will call the Super Bowl Chiefs and Niners, Jim Nance from CBS. This will be Jim's seventh Super Bowl, third Super Bowl, Tony Romo. And Jim joins us on the pod to talk about calling the Super Bowl and many other topics, get into uh, the reaction fans have had lately to Tony Romo. He shares his thoughts on the Kevin Burkhart, Greg Olson, Tom Brady situation. Uh, but Jim makes it clear he'd love to call the NFL game in Brazil next year. That's going to be on a Friday night, opening week of the season. Um, and some great stories uh, in Vegas for the Super Bowl with Jim. So excellent, excellent stuff with Jim Nance. We'll call the Super Bowl on this podcast. And following Jim Salicata joins me for our weekly train of thought segment. We had a bunch of topics to run down, the Grammys, Super Bowl wagering, Curb Your Enthusiasm, the WWE situation, and Sal has a big house update for everyone. So you'll want to stick around for the Train of Thoughts segment. Before we get to it, we've had some phenomenal episodes and some really tremendous guests in recent week weeks. Brian Curtis from The Ringer was on last week to go through the latest sports media news. He was outstanding. Kyle Brandt, two weeks ago, one of the best interviews we've had recently from Good Morning Football. Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson were on the pod three weeks ago. So if you've missed any of those, check those out and make sure you subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trana. And if you leave a review on Apple, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's get to this episode. Jim Nance will call the Super Bowl, followed by Sal Akata and Trana Thoughts, all right here, right now. On SI Media with Jimmy Trana. All right, joining me now. Appreciate him taking the time. No one busier this week. He is calling the Super Bowl between the Chiefs and the Niners. He is Jim Nance. Jim, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. How are you? Hello, friend. I'm doing well. If you're catching me on a day where it's media day, and you know, it's just another reminder how fortunate we are to be able to have the chance to call a game like this. The only thing it also does, though, it propels me into um, kind of an orbit of, let's get the game here, man. I am so ready to call this right now. Let's and just dispense with everything else we need yeah. to do. I don't need another meeting. I don't need another clip. <laughs> I don't need another stat. I'm ready, man. So, you know, it's it's another five days to go, but. We'll make the most out of it while we're here in Las Vegas. This is pretty cool calling a Las Vegas Super Bowl. I got to tell I you, I want to get I want to get into all of that. And I was going to say you're saying this on a Tuesday when we're taping this, so you got you got a long way to go before that kickoff on Sunday. And you know, there's a part of me I don't want to, and I want to get into obviously Chiefs Niners. There's a part of me I got to admit when you were so nice to agree to come on, and you know, in the back of my head, I said, I, I, I you know, I know I could get Jim on the week of the Super Bowl, and it made me extra bummed out last week that Dan Campbell decided not to coach the game properly and the Lions didn't make it to the Super Bowl because it would have been a full circle moment for you and I because I had you on last season before Thanksgiving. I said, no more Lions on Thanksgiving. You straightened me out. You said, bad take, Jimmy. And you said, they're going to keep it closed against Buffalo and I'm going to mention your name. You kept your promise. You did that. And now <laughs> a right. year later, the Lions should have been in the Super Bowl. So full circle. It could have been a full circle moment for you and I if the Lions were in this game as they should be. And I would have mentioned your name yet again. <laughs> the time it would have <laughs> been in the Super Bowl, Jimmy. You still never know. But what a season they had. I missed yeah. most of that game. Of course, I've gone back to watch it since. But watching it live is a lot different than knowing what the next play is going to be when you watch it on tape. Yeah. It's an incredible season. He rolled the dice so many times this year, so he didn't go against kind of what his core belief was. And I, all you got to do is look back yeah. at the finish of that Dallas game when he they kept backing him up, and he still kept going for the two. Well, even – well, you know, I don't want to get into all that, but that's – to me, that Dallas – what you just pointed out in that Dallas game and, and what happened in the NFC title game, it did feel to me – like, I feel like the going for it on fourth down, it, it almost became like Dan Campbell's shtick. And some point, like the NFC title game, you got to put the shtick aside. It's not week six against, you know, the Titans. This is, you go up three scores in the third quarter, but th that's not for us to get into now. But I, I, w how great, though, you know, a Lions Super Bowl would have been tremendous for you guys. Does it bother you at all? I, listen, you're going to love calling this game. It's going to be a great game. You have two great teams. The talent on both teams is immense. But it is a, it is a um, 
a rematch, so to speak, because they met in the Super Bowl a few years ago. When you call a rematch, do you do a lot of research on that first game? Are you going to give us a lot from that first Super Bowl between no. these teams? I don't think it's much more than a mention, even if it amounts to that, because you're dealing with this new animal called a live football game in front of you. So there's so much pregame buildup, so many stories. They've all been told. It doesn't bother me one bit that it's a rematch uh, from four years ago. It's not last year. And by the right. way, there could be another one next year. These teams are young. They've got star yep. players, got great coaching. You know, I, I'm I'm pretty good encyclopedia here of knowledge about the Super Bowl. And there have been great Super Bowl rematches. Dallas and Pittsburgh, especially, yeah. were, were great matchups and happened after a couple of years apart. And I think that's what we're going to have here. I, I do. Yeah. I know people say, well, Dallas, Buffalo wasn't sensational, but I think this one has the ingredients with the star power. I mean, the game's a toss up in my mind. And, we're about to see what I think will be the most watched show in the history of television. Without a doubt. Just so Without many things doubt. are giving us positive momentum going in. And is that important to you? Do you care about Not that? Really. 115, I mean, 115 million people watched last year's Super Bowl. It was the record. It's going to get broken this year without a doubt. Does it mean anything to say, oh, me and Tony called the most watched Super Bowl of all time? We've done it before. It was kind of one of those things that it's kind of like the quarterback salary chase in the NFL. The next guy up gets the record. So, yeah, you know, I've had it, um, I don't know, four or five times already in my career, including Super Bowl 50, which fittingly was the golden game, 50. And that was the most watched show. I, I have yet to have anybody – Put a little extra money on my paycheck, or pick up a <laughs> pick up a dinner for me back home. <laughs> Didn't you call the game that was the most watched? Hey, bring a bring a bottle of wine over to Nance's yeah. table. But hey, I don't want to minimize it because it is there is a little bit of pride, more than a little bit of pride, to be able to have that show. Yeah, and it means something to a lot of the people on my my CBS team, and not just our broadcast team. I'm talking our CBS sales and. You know, it it would be a nice mark to have. I expect yeah. we're going to get it, and I'm I'm I don't want to minimize it. It just it's you know next year we'll, somebody else will come out. The next game will probably break it next year. Yeah, you will get it because the ratings have been crazy this year, especially in the postseason. Now, you touched on it briefly earlier. It, it will be I I think it would be shocking if this isn't a close game. What makes me a little nervous is you and Tony behind the mic because your first two Super Bowls, we had the Rams Patriots complete dud snore fest, and then you had the Bucks 31 9 over the Chiefs. So hopefully, you and Tony, it, you don't go three strikes and you're out here. We need, we need you and Tony to get a close one here. I didn't know we were going to be having to defend ourselves on the outcome of these games. But uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. We haven't had good games. <laughs> I didn't realize the announcers could uh, influence history like that. Yeah. And in some ways, really, before Tony, I've had a string of not so interesting Super Bowl matchups. Had a couple that were good. What was your best one? I think you could argue the Harbaugh Bowl. People forget how interesting it was at the end of the game because everything was about the power outage after the game. Right. You know, there was the 40 right. minute power outage, 35 minutes, whatever it was. But people forget San Francisco with inside two minutes had four passes into the end zone from the five yard line. I think three of the four passes went to Crabtree and Kaepernick was the quarterback and they were all incomplete. And then there was a defensive stand by San Francisco in use of their timeouts and the Ravens took a safety. And, you know, the game still came down to the last play, which was a free yeah. kick. And a run back, and it was 34-31 game. But actually, it was a pretty good game. Again, I think yeah. it got completely lost because of the of the outage. Yeah. Third Super Bowl with Tony. How many overall for you is this going to be now? This, this will be the seventh that I've been on play-by-play. -play. I had the JB role for two years, Super Bowl 35, which was a snooze fest. That was the Ravens 35-7 to over the Giants. Uh, and I had the... Carolina New England game which 
was a Vinatieri winning kick. Hosting that with with uh, Dan Marino, Dion, and Boomer, and that was my last one as the host. So seven play by play as of Sunday. So tell me from the first to the seventh, what have you learned, or what do you do differently? in the week up to the game is can, can you over prepare? Do you prepare a little less because maybe you used to over prepare? Do you pace yourself during the week in the build up to Sunday? Give me what you've learned from one to seven. As well, that's a great Super question. Bowl first off. And what I'm learning is to pace myself on the reading. I already have so many anecdotal stories. I mean, it's, it is information overload. What I've learned is, to really not back off on the prep. I still want to make sure I'm not missing anything. But this to maybe prioritize it a little bit less. This is a game where there definitely needs to be more air. You know, it's going to be a great scene. I think, like you, I think it's going to be a competitive game. I don't want to drown people with information overload from me. I want to focus on the game. And that's what I've just really learned is... Just pace it out. I'm early in the week. I'm already ready to call the game. Yeah, it happened yeah. right now. Somebody said, "Hey, they decided to play the game over here in the convention hall." I wouldn't need a board. I wouldn't yeah. need anything in front of me. I know yeah. the names, the numbers, all the vital stories. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Well, this one's interesting too because you, you say you want to maybe pull back a little bit on the anecdotal, focus on the game, but there's so much. There's so many, the characters and storylines are in such abundance with it. Mahomes on pace to be the greatest ever. Kelsey, we know what he is in the best tight end. Andy Reid, a great story. Shanahan, coach's son, trying to get us for a Super Bowl. McCaffrey is under is almost underrated. He's so good. Kittle, I mean, there, you can really load up here with these two teams on, on the characters, the stories. There's no shortage. There's no question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just, but what is it? I mean, how many times are you going to talk about yeah. Travis Kelsey and George Kittle? I actually think that's a sneaky good thing to watch in the game. Best yeah. tight end wins. Yep. Because they're both capable of having eight catches for 130 yards and two touchdowns, and they become unstoppable, and that becomes the difference in the game. So maybe an 85 versus 87 match. Up is is something to watch out for. I might try to sell that for our opening. In fact, now that it's yep. leaving my lips, uh, I, I like think it. that I, I, I all of these stories you're telling though, and you're 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 pitching that these are out there. It's not a story that you're telling with paragraphs. It's the stories that you're telling in two sentences. Mm. That's the art of it: is being able to tell that story make sense. Be cogent and be done and in and out in 15 to 20. And even better when you can tell it together with your teammate, with Tony. Right. And you move on to the next play. Every play in these games, Jimmy, is a chapter. I say this, and I mean it. I remind myself there's going to be roughly 130 plays on Sunday, give or take 10. That's 130 chapters. You never which never know which chapter you open up is going to be the chapter that sells the book, that tells the story. So you got to be ready for every one of them. Now, let me, so when you guys do a Sunday 425 game, and whether you guys have it or Fox has it with, with Kevin Burkhart, Greg Olson, that's always the most watched game of the week. You get anywhere from 20, 25, 30 million during the regular season. You're going to have 120 million people watch it on Sunday. How much do you have to cater to those 80 million who aren't there weeks one through 16, or do you don't cater to them at all? I think you're asking, am I going to dumb it down a little bit in terms of you've got the French fan that's going to be in here? Yeah. You know, it's you have to be slick because there is some of that. There's also a lot of people watching in groups and maybe not even hearing what we're saying. In many, many millions of cases, the TV's on. They can't even hear you because there are 50 people talking at one time. Yeah. I'm always aware, I think I am, of what the audience needs to know and the depth of that story, where you want to go with it. So it's something that makes sense. Um, but I've talked about it before. It has to flow through me. I have to feel it. I don't script it. I don't write it out and pull a card out and say, 
Okay, let me tell a story here about George Kittle. So, Tony, you know, George Kittle started this thing called the tight end you, you know, and I'm reading it off of a card. No, it's none of that. It has to be at the right time. It has to match up with either a graphic or a replay. Where are they going with the visuals on this thing? You just kind of move along. Mm. It has to flow through you. Let me ask you this about the Super Bowl. You've been covering the NFL for a very, very, very long time. Like we said, we're on, you're on your seventh Super Bowl. Did you ever think we'd have one in Las Vegas? No. Well, I did in the last, before they got it, you could see the trend where it was going. It changed so quickly. Yes, I mean, it, it went from taboo yes, to even talk about, being able to talk about anything that would be in this universe to, hey, we have a franchise here, and hey, we have a Super Bowl here, and now every league wants to send a team here. Um, Ten years ago, Tony had a business guy with a fantasy football league, and yep. there was a convention here in Las Vegas, and it got brought to a halt. I don't know exactly by whom, but it was stopped because it wasn't – the optics didn't look good. It was just yeah. fantasy football. Now, you know, we're in a different space. I want to add one thing. You said, how do you prepare the week any differently? I don't want to do anything crazy, but I want to enjoy this experience. This is something I'm going to look back on one day and say, we were the first to ever do a game in Las Vegas. Well, what did right. you do? I sat in my room and read the whole time. <laughs> now, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I started out with Gusto on Monday. I had a golf event in Pebble Beach. We had a horrible storm. My house still doesn't have power, but I had oh, to get here. So I came in on Monday, and I set the pace on Monday. Monday night, I went out to dinner. I called, and I asked for the honor of the company of Brent Musburger. So I had dinner with Brent last night. And I, I can't think of anything I'm going to enjoy more the rest of the week than sitting down and having a three-hour dinner and being regaled by someone with whom I worked many shows when I was a kid in my 20s and was his understudy and used the same yeah. studio and sat in a chair that had his name on the back of it when I was doing the college football scoreboard show on Saturday. He was doing the NFL Today on Sunday, or we were working the Masters together, or whatever it might have, working the final four together. And he said his goodbye to CBS. He threw it back to me and I thanked him on behalf of CBS. And I looked up to him so much before I became a member of the CBS family in 1985. And, you know, really, Jimmy, he was maybe the one person in my life that the words always came out upside down. I was so in awe of him. I've met mm. a lot of people I could never have imagined. I've had dinners, I've told you before, with presidents and queens, the Queen of England. But I had an easier time speaking to them than I did to Brent. Not that it was that awkward. It's just self-consciously, I felt like, yeah. ooh, I'm sounding. I know. I know that feeling because I've had I'm it. not grammatically yeah. giving him sentences that make yeah. sense. So it was time from a 26-year-old to a 64-year-old to sit down as mentor and pupil, as colleague and friends, and have dinner, and we did that on Monday night, and it was you're a killing glory. me. You're killing me because I know we have limited time, and I could do an hour with you on the dinner with Brent. I mean, I believe me, I can do a whole separate podcast on your dinner with Brent, but, um, and I'm sure he's got a lot to say about the Super Bowl being in Vegas and and what's going on with that. So, but let me. I, I had Kyle Brandt from Good Morning Football on the podcast sure. last week. And uh, Kyle was telling me that he's employed by the NFL, NFL Network, that there is strict, like he's not even allowed near the casinos, obviously the sports books, everything. So you're not an NFL Network employee, but you're calling, like, can you go into the, not the sports book, but can you enjoy the casino if you want to play a little blackjack? Well, no one's told me that I couldn't do that. Okay. You can't Obviously, go in a sports have, book, though, I would assume. I have the better judgment to know I'm not <laughs> going near a sports book. And by the way, it's not a lot of fun. There's so many people here that are football fans. They're expecting 300,000 to be here, even though only 70,000 will be at the game. So walking through casinos right now, I'm not trying to sound like a hot shot, but it's not something right. I want to spend a lot of time doing. 
Will we will we will we play any casino games while we're here for the week? Will Jim Nance sit down at a blackjack table, roulette, craps, any anything, or we're we're passing on that this week? Depends on how many people are around. Now, okay. the second thing that I did on Monday, now I set pretty crazy pace here, is I went out into the desert somewhere after dinner with Brent, with a few of my colleagues and David Copperfield last night. I'd seen his show here in Vegas when I was calling a regular season game with the Raiders. P- pretty amazing. You know, he's does two, two or three shows a night, still going strong. I mean, stronger than ever. And I had a chance to tell him that in October. So he said, hey, if you get back and you want to see something cool, I'm working on something down the road. I, I, but it's going to need to be kind of after midnight. I said, um, can I bring a couple of my colleagues and friends with me? He said, yeah, you can bring up to three. So I did. The four of us went with David. And uh, we went somewhere off-road. And uh, we were given the gift of watching the moon disappear. I saw with my own eyes. I mean, it was the moon. And I wanted to ask him, but I didn't. Why didn't you bring it back? But (laughs) it disappeared. And that was my, I mean, that's a pretty impressive, let me get a feel for being in Vegas. I go out with Brent. You know, Brent is so sharp. He could still be doing anything. He knows everything about the league, his recall about his history and everybody I've worked with. You would have been like the perfect guy to be at that dinner. I know this is right in your wheelhouse. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I went out last night and it was two o'clock when we got back from point unknown. Pitch dark, right. well outside of Las Vegas. And I'm walking through the casino, and there's like one guy slumped over a blackjack table. And I thought, this is the time. Maybe <laughs> one hand and run. And what happened? I was fishing for my money clip, and the guy looked up at me like, you're not – I'm on a roll, a roll here. You know that feeling when you're yeah. sitting on third base and the last thing you want <laughs> is somebody to pull back a chair on first yeah. base. And I had this look like, please, I've got this table to myself. And I thought, eh, maybe another night. I, went to I hear you. Yeah. You have plenty of time to get it in. Plenty of time. But um, if I'm walking by a roulette board, a roulette yeah. table, and 17 black is my color for my uh, – birthday and all and that's the number that james bond i believe always played anyway was 17 here's what you need to do if i may if you pass the roulette table number seven you play it's your seventh super bowl you gotta Ooh. throw 20 on number seven 20 dollars on number seven you want to be partners in this sure um, i'll venmo you i'll venmo you 20 bucks play number seven no, let me wait I, yeah, yeah. listen i had a friend one time his name's jim tunney he presided over three super bowls is the referee, the legend, Jim Tony. Yeah, he should yeah. be he should be in the, in Canton. And he used to say about Art McNally that if there was ever one person in my life, he said, Jim, until I met you, that I could play poker with on the phone with all my money, my life savings, he said it'd be Art McNally. So if I play Yeah, give me a call when you're at the roulette table and number I seven. Take out my phone. Yeah. And play yeah. seven. Yeah, All right, it's your we'll seventh see. Super Bowl. You got to do it. And seven's been a good number for me for a lot of go. reasons. Seventh Bowl at Pebble Beach, etc. Yeah. Um, let me turn this because now I got to get ugly here for a minute. We've discussed this before. I don't want to belabor it, but you're not on Twitter, so you're not seeing the week to week on Tony and you as a team. I know Tony came out last week, said he thinks everything's fine. I had Brian Curtis on this podcast. We don't understand sort of the Tony backlash. Is it does it is it bothering you guys at all that there seems to be Tony backlash? Never had one conversation with Tony about it. Not one. I mean, I take it kind of as a foregone conclusion from what people tell me that everybody gets it. You've told me that before. You're it's- the one that's told me before, don't go on there. A hundred percent, but it's become a thing with Tony now where I, where I, and I've said this many times, I don't think half the people bashing Tony actually mean it. I think it's a piggyback effect, but there are a lot of people 
who have criticisms of Tony. I still enjoy Tony, and then I get crap for that, but it's pretty vocal. And I know you're not on Twitter, and I know Tony doesn't pay attention to Twitter, but I, I'm curious if, it just, if it's gotten back to you guys at all. I've assumed it. I just assumed it. Um, no, I'm not aware that it's ratcheted up more this year, if that's what you're telling me. Mm-hmm. Now, people say, oh, wait a minute. Don't you people send you sometimes clips or something on Twitter? Sure. But how I would get from there to see what people are saying about Tony? No, I mean, I wouldn't even think about it. I'm going to use my own judgment of how the broadcasts are going. And I couldn't be happier. I mean, I love working with Tony. We have, for anybody to ever even think that well, again, I'm not even sure this is what they're saying. Our chemistry is is great. Our time together is just like it is on the air. We have a lot of laughter, a lot of fun. We see silliness. Sometimes we bring that silliness to the air. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it it doesn't. That's humor. Um, but no, I don't want to. I don't want to say any more about it because you're asking okay. me something that yeah. I'm. I'm not familiar with. We're trying the best we can. I think we've had, I know we've had a super year and I'm, I really feel good about it going into the game. Fair enough. Let me get your take on this as a, as a long, long time respected top play by play guy. What can share with me what you can about what you think things are like right now for Kevin Burkhart, who did two years with Greg Olson, who became a fan favorite. Everyone thought Greg did a great job and he did. And now that's being broken up because Tom's coming in. And to me, you can't question the decision by Fox. He's Tom Brady, greatest quarterback of all time. You want him on your network. You want him on your air. And so much of the hullabaloo about about it is focused on Greg and Tom, Greg and Tom. I'm fascinated by the Burkhart role in all this. Is he walking a tightrope? You know, it's like he's cheating on Greg, but he's going to work with Brady, which has got to be cool. Can he say it's cool? He's working with, you know, what, if, if Kevin came to you for some advice, what would you tell him? You know, he's just got to do what he's doing because we don't make those decisions. He didn't make that decision. And right. I think you try to be authentic. I, I don't know Kevin really well, but we've exchanged some Really nice text through the years. And I'm going to see him Thursday night. Tony's getting the Pat Summerall Award. And I'm yes. going to be his presenter. And Kevin is the is the host. So deep admiration for him. And I think that when I watch the broadcast with Kevin and, and Greg, I think there's something that's good between the two of them. I think there's a real respect and appreciation. That's what it feels like as a viewer. That's what you want. That's what I feel like we have. I know we have. And listen, Greg, Greg understood this is going into this season, maybe even knew it before last year that this was going to happen. He's done a great job. And I, I can't imagine he could interpret it any of those ways that you said. Oh, it's like he's been cheating on me. Kevin's doing his job. He's doing right. what he's being asked to do, and he's doing it well. And I'm sure Greg understands that. Has Tom come to you for any broadcasting advice? You don't have to tell me what you've what you've said to him, but have you talked to Tom Brady at all about him becoming? I saw Tom on Saturday. He was at Pebble Beach, and we talk as friends quite often. I would say quite often, maybe you know, every other month, maybe every third month. We text more often than that, and I know that he's very excited about this next endeavor in his life. And I know he wants to be good at it. We know how Tom went about being the goat. We know how he left nothing unturned and you, know, you can't replace reps. And I believe they're getting reps as we speak right now. I'm always rooting for Tom. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to know Tom and Peyton. They're both friends of mine. Dick, you can be friends of them both because they're both friends. Um, but I think he's more than looking for a play-by-play -play guy to tell him how to do it. I think he's he's been mining the the, the commentary field from the analysts. Yeah. It's interesting, too, because I think, too, I think, I think you and Tony are almost in a way 
a little bit responsible for what's going on with Tom because Tony was really the first one who went from field to number one analyst mm-hmm. and was great right off the bat, won everybody over, right? And I think networks, everyone wants to try to copy that. Now, listen, this is Tom Brady. If you're not going to get Tom Brady and put him on the fourth regional game and have him have him do, you know, Texans, Titans, it, you're going to make him the star of your network. But, you know, Tony, if people forget, most people don't go from the field in one year to the A job, which Tony did and blew everyone away. So I think you guys have a little hand in the Brady situation. Put it to well, Tom way. will do really well. I don't have any doubt. I, He'll do really I, well. I, Greg's a young guy. He's going to have a long, long career. And yeah. one thing I learned a long time ago from people like Brent and from people like Pat Summerall, I know we live in a world where you want everything now, 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 give me, give me, give me this right now. No. And if you can just be patient, the good and glorious things that come your way, if you just let time take care of itself, I'm speaking like a 64-year-old wise man who has all the answers, but it's been really true. That was that was advice that was given to me by people like those broadcasters I mentioned, producers like Frank Trichinian. It, it's it's been something that I've never been overly anxious that I've got to have this now. Right. Enjoy the ride. Just like I am enjoying the week in Las Vegas, man, I'm enjoying the ride. I'm grateful. I don't, Jimmy, I don't root against anybody. I had this I chat with some golf media recently, and they were like, they're trying to make it hyper competitive. I don't look at it that way. Right. People say, oh, you can't really be true. It, like that is true. Yeah. I'm not rooting against anyone for heaven's sake. I want everybody to do their best and then let me try to be my best. Yep. You know, yeah, you guys are going to all get great ratings and yeah. people that want to take shots and whatever. And they live in a community where they feel like they're a part of a community. They have a same thought. That's okay. Listen, you whether know, it's Nance and Romo, do, hmm? whether it's Nance and Romo, Burkhart and Brady, 425 on Sunday, you get a good game. Oh. You're going to get your 25 million people watching. I want to tell you about that. I'm glad you brought that up earlier, too. All right. I want to do a couple of rapid fire with you. So, and I know I got to let you go. So, go go ahead. Go ahead. I I think sometimes it's not, and maybe it's our own doing. I don't think that the 425 window for both of us, CBS and Fox, is really, I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. My story on that would be to, bifurcate the composite rating that we have taking the one o'clock games and the 425 and blending them and saying, Hey, this was our season rating. No, the one o'clock window is its own category. Right. And the 425 window is its own package. Yep. And it's that the best package, package. Doesn't get set often enough. Right. It's, no, it's the, the best number package one package far. in the NFL. And this year, it. CBS is 425 window. It's huge. not this way every year. Was fractionally, I mean, really fractions ahead, mm-hmm. like fifty thousand viewer average ahead of Fox. So at the end of the year, I'm not a PR guy. Nobody asked me this, but as a storyteller, uh, my story would be CBS had the number one package in the NFL this year. The four twenty five window on CBS was the highest rated window. I don't want to hear about that being blended with the one o'clock window. Yeah, I want to yeah. know about windows because. 8 o'clock on NBC is its own separate window. Monday Night Football is its own separate window. Let's talk about separate windows. And we had a phenomenal year. And we're, you know, yeah, you, you had a lot of great games. And the, you know, the quarterbacks in the AFC help, even though it's not AFC, NFC anymore. But I let me, I know I got to let you go. Let me just ask you some quick quickies here that you can just give me quick answers. They announced the NFL is going to be a Friday night game in Brazil week one. The NFL told me today they don't know who's airing the game. Would you want CBS? Would you want to do that I game? I already said it like three times today. I want the game. <laughs> you want that game? See, I love to travel. I yeah. love seeing the world. Today we had our media conference. I did interviews with two or three outlets in Australia. These are people that see my work because the golf travels really well around the world. I had two different journalists from Ireland, one from London, one from Belgium. The world is shrinking. Much more so than it was what it was like when I was a kid growing up. And 
I want to see the world. I haven't been right. to Brazil. I would love to do that first. I'm making a big pitch here to all the people in the NFL office that put the schedule together. They're friends of mine. We want this game. And I promise you, we'll, we'll do it justice. All right, Jim. In a month, we will have March Madness. It will be your first March Madness where we don't have Jim Nance on CBS in many, 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 many years. Are you getting a little verklempt about that? Are you okay with it? Where, where do we stand a month off from, your, you know, you get the itch? Where are we with that? I'm very comfortable with the decision that was made in 2021 to earmark Houston in 23 as the place to exit stage left. I'm excited for the the, the tournament coming up. My Houston Cougars will be right in the middle of it. I think I'm going to be, do, be doing some traveling to to their games. Hopefully, yeah. it's a long, long run. But it was it was the right decision. I don't want to be on the road too much, as I avowed when the news first came out. I want more time with my kids. So, no, no looking back on this one. I mean, this this is was the right thing to do at this point in my life. Last one. I, I wrote this in my column the day after. I loved your call on Tyler Bass's missed field goal in the Chiefs Bills game. It happened very fast, but if you can, tell me when Norwood first came into your brain. Was it when the kick was being set up? Did you not think about wide right till the ball was sailing wide right? The call wasn't planned. It was spontaneous. But if you can, I'd love it. I, my, give me, I'd love it how it all came about for you on that call. Because you said it, the, it the dreaded words. No, get. yeah. Uh, it happened as soon as the ball went right of the goalpost, and I knew the symmetry. I have a pretty good, maybe even underrated knowledge of the history of the NFL. Dates, records, names. I, I could be a really good partner in trivial pursuit for the NFL, <laughs> and it's all in my head, and it's a moment away, and I'm proud of it. I think sometimes my depth of knowledge for golf, people think, well, he's just he just has that for golf. I know I have it for football. I've been blessed with a good memory. And it, it came to me right away. And how I said it, I didn't really know. Jen Sabatel was was with us that weekend in Buffalo. And she's the CBS's that, PR so, person for yeah, people who don't know. Go ahead. Exceptional PR yeah. person. And as soon as yeah. as soon as we took the headset off, she said, Wow, that was really a good call. And Jimmy, I'm gonna tell you the first thing I said to her, what did I say? <laughs> I didn't know That's exactly wild. what I had said. So, again, my instincts told me to say wide right, and the two most dreaded words in Buffalo have resurfaced again. I mean, I, I don't know. It, I was fortunate. I had what strikes me, context. I what had strikes the context me is the viewer. The of it. Yeah. Well, I know I you know was, the history. Yeah, I know you know I, the history. What impresses me as, as the viewer and someone is – how fast it's got to come together for you because yeah. the kick misses. You got to go to commercial right away. You're not going to have a much, bunch of time to dwell on it. Tony's got to say what he says, but you manage to get in the phrase that, that drives it all home. And it happened right on the spot. I mean, yeah. right after it was missed. Um, yeah. And I felt, I felt good about it. Um, and I could have, if somebody gave me some time and would have said, hey, write it out. Write something that's not just yeah. wide right. Say right. something that's a little sweeter than that. I mean, I'm not trying to applaud what I said. I didn't even know what I had said. It just was pure instincts coming out at yeah. that time. Flo it, it, that Talked about it before. It was flowing through me. And thankfully, the good man upstairs was looking after me and – I was feeling lost in the moment, and that's what I probably would have said if I was sitting on my couch at home. Well, hopefully you get a moment like that on Sunday with the Niners and the Chiefs in Las Vegas. Mm. And uh, again, it would be shocking if this one's not a one-score game, 10-point game in the fourth quarter. It just Those teams are too good either way to – to have it not be close. And, you know, I've had this conversation, you know, we, we always talk about all, all announcers want is one thing, close games. And, and you really need in a Super Bowl close game. Who knows how high that rating could get if you get, you know, seven point game in the fourth quarter. You're going to 
the records will be broken in a massive way. Now, Sean for McManus CBS. presided over our media session today, and before it was in a ballroom at the convention center, and there were probably 200 people out there and a lot of cameras on them, and we had everybody that's a part of the Nickelodeon and the main CBS broadcast, the production teams, and all the on-air um, members as well on the stage behind him. And at the end, he said he has been told by the NFL – that the game is going to go to double overtime. So the place roared with laughter, which is what I thought. If it goes to double overtime, now there are going to be all these conspiracy theories out oh. there. Yes, say so now now, you know, again, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna pay credence to that and people are gonna say CBS knew the whole time. Yeah. I hope he yep. was right though. I hope he was foreshadowing something kind of like that anyway. Has there ever been a Super Bowl that goes has gone to overtime? No, the first overtime game was the was the Atlanta San Francisco uh, Atlanta New England game. That was overtime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Twenty. Right. The twenty. Yeah. 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 Thirty four. Yeah. Twenty eight. Right. Yeah. I think of that game is over yeah. way before when. Yeah. Well, I appreciate they you ran coming right on. down the field. New England yep. ran right yeah. down the field. James White scored the winner. Yeah. And Atlanta never touched the football in overtime. Of course, the rules have changed since then. Why is Belichick not the coach of the Falcons? Do you have any info on that? I mean, you're hearing the same thing from everyone that it could have been viewed as as inside. Some people would have been concerned what that might have meant to their power inside the franchise. It may have not been fully endorsed by been for, fully endorsed by enough people. It may be listen, maybe a year for for Bill to sit on the sideline, do a little television work. I don't know anything about that right now, was, but do a little television work. He's going to get a job again. I was just going to say, here's one for you. CBS comes to you. Bill's going to take a year off and then get back into coaching. We want to stick him with you and Tony for the year. What do you think? I have a great relationship with Bill. Again, like I told you when you asked me about Kevin Burkhart, um, I'm grateful. More than anything, my life is – the beacon that my life is always running toward is one seeking and feeling a, a real depth of gratitude. And I don't ask those things. Those, if I'm told that's what we're doing. If Belichick came to you and said, Jim, I want some advice. Should I do studio or should I do games? What would you tell him? Well, I would think that in Bill's case, he's going to get another chance. Yeah. I would think he'd be, it'd be more beneficial for him to go out and do a game to see from the from the box to to see to see the game yeah. in person meet go to practices and things like that i mean i think he'd be fun. very good at it but you know i saw the the the, the nfl network special they had a couple of years ago he was sitting on the desk with oh with yeah Rick, and he yep, was very good on that it doesn't surprise me no no i mean he would no. be he would be exceptional and who knows maybe that's in the works right now with with people yeah uh, I look forward to the day, though, when he goes back to pursuing a winning team and getting the records that I think he deserves. Getting yeah, the overall win total. Yeah, I'm bummed he's not coaching next year. It looks better if he's in it, plain and simple. He'll get back. Yeah. I I appreciate it. And enjoy, what? Give me is the weather. Is, is you going to be what okay? Is, weather by Sunday? Yeah, you know that's not going to be a factor because we're inside okay. Allegiant. But the right. weather here on the weekend is going to be back to looking like we're in the desert. Right. You know, okay. Bright sunshine and blue skies. We're going to be just fine. Should be a great game. Mahomes, Purdy, McCaffrey, Kelsey, Reach. It's you guys are set up for a good one. Swift. Enjoy it. I was trying to avoid that. You know what? I I admire you for doing that. I had to bring it up, but yeah, she's. Uh, yeah. She's I will say, out of, out of all the networks, the one who hasn't overdone it is CBS. Yeah, well, we have a director and a producer, Mike Arnold and Jim Rickoff, who are – not that they've tried to neglect it. They've right. done it. They've done it tastefully, and she's gotten her on-air time with all of us. But we've had her on uh, seven or eight games so far this year. Yeah. And – um I think it's been great with the interest she's brought to the NFL. Listen, I have a son who's going to be at the game, and I have two daughters, and they adore her. 
And that's got their interest level up a lot more in this game than it was the last time I did a Super Bowl, I can promise you. <laughs> and I'm I'm sure that there's there's gonna be people just like my my Caroline and my Findlay. I took Findlay to the New Year's Day, New Year's Eve game in Kansas City. Cincinnati at KC was the four twenty five okay, yes. national doubleheader game. Yeah. And um, she wanted to have a chance to catch a glimpse of uh, the great Taylor Swift. And she did. She didn't get to meet her. Yeah. So, uh, that was a big thing for her. You know, she's nine years old. It's a big deal. And my daughter will be watching. So that's a good thing. And if you have to present the trophy to Travis Kelsey. Uh-oh. You're going to say you're going to say this one scenario people have been pitching to me that he's going to make uh, no some no no i'm not no no i'm not that stupid i'm what i was going to say is if you're pitching if you're presenting the trophy to travis and she's down there your daughter might want to get a little can i get close to dad which will then she maybe be on the, they will not be on the field <laughs> but i'm going to leave you with this yes go ahead i told you my approach to the week i'm not going crazy Right. I'm soaking it in. This is the one. There's only going to be a first Super Bowl ever at Vegas. There's going to be dozens and dozens to come next decades and centuries. But, Jimmy, you've got to fight for your right to party. I mean, (laughs) and bet number seven. And bet number seven at the roulette table. Number seven. All right, take care, Jim. Appreciate it. Have a great game. Thank you, man. Thank you. Enjoy it. All right, joining me now, as he does every week, for our weekly train of thought segment from WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV in New York, my buddy Sal Akata. Sal, how are you? I feel like we have a lot of catching up to do. We do. We do. Um, I have a lot of topics. A lot of topics. All right. Um, All right, well, let's... Obviously, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl. Let's start with this. Did you watch the Grammys on Sunday? I did not. I did not oh, watch okay. it. I knew about it. I actually did want to see some of the performances. I have not taken the time yet to go back and watch. Okay. So you saw none of it? No. All right. <laughs> that, oh, wow, that shoots down here. That shoots down. Here's what I saw that bothered me. Yeah. And I'm not trying to start shit here. I'm being dead ass serious. Okay. How does Travis Kelsey not show up to that? You're being serious right now? Dead serious. I, I can't I just I can't do this conversation. I'm just, just telling you that's what I'm not trying to be well, you gotta put yourself in relationship shoes here. Relationship but, but, shoes. But yeah, you gotta put yourself in Super Bowl shoes. No, it's what what you tell what do you do? He sat in the hotel room the whole night and studied film? What I think do, they traveled on Sunday. I think that's yeah, when they tra- right. You Travis Kelsey, figure it out. It's a few hours away, like I, she's traveled around. Like she went to Buffalo of all places to watch him play football. Uh, here's it. He, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest here. I have a lot of thoughts about this, but I'm not doing it on the pod because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> okay. But so all right, which, we'll talk about because that she decides to show up to every game. He's got to show, like, I, I'm not getting into it. I get but, it. But relax. How was Billy uh, Joel? <laughs> Here's the thing. So I'll say, this is what I wanted to say about the Grammys. Number one, I love Miley Cyrus. I oh, mean, I missed that. I heard about it. I got to go back. You're not that. allowed to like, you know, objectify anyone, but just say big fan of Miley Cyrus's performance. Interesting. And she can sing her ass off. Okay. So like everyone's going crazy about Tracy Chapman yeah. and Luke Combs. Now, I wouldn't have known Luke Combs if he fell at me until Sunday night. I don't do country music in any way, shape, or form. Don't follow it. Don't know it. I actually have like a visceral hatred for it because it, like, I hear it and it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Every song's the same, like you know, going down to drink some beers and whatever, shoot my guns. But like, it was a good performance and it was enjoyable to watch. But like, I would have much rather seen Tracy Chapman sing the song by herself. Like she's I, got some voice in the way she performed it. Like so, I understand. Like he had to. He remade the song. His remake of the song became a huge hit. Of course, he has to sing it. I, I, the rea- But I'm saying, I was like, 
I would like to have seen her do it by herself because she's so good. So he actually, I thought it was just a, a song with the same title. He actually redid the song. Yeah, like a cover. Like, you know, he re, like, you know, the people remake songs all the time. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I know the original, obviously, and because of the Grammys, I went back and listened to that several times over the last week. But right. I didn't realize that his, I just thought his was a different version with the same title. I didn't no, know same, exact, same exact song. So they did a duet. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then, what was the other thing? It was Miley Cyrus. It was that. And I don't know. I guess those are my, there was one other thing I wanted to say about it, but I can't remember. Nothing from Billy Joel. You love Billy Joel. No, here's the thing. I'm one of those jerks who, and I get it. This is all, I don't want to hear new stuff. Like I would have rather have done scenes from an Italian restaurant. Like I don't, you You know. You don't like his new song? It's okay. I mean, it's. Oh, I actually love it. I think it's been great. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm not. I'm just like my thing is if Billy Joel's going to perform, he did an old song. Like, but this is so. If you go back and watch it, it was actually pretty funny because it was so bad. So he did the new song. Great. It was like the last performance of the night, I guess. Then they do the um, album of the year or the mm-hmm. record, whatever it was, the big award. Then he did a song to finish the show, and he did an old. He did. Um, I think he did. You may be right. Oh, no, okay. Nice. Or, okay. He did it. He did it. Yeah. So, but when he did the last song, which was a quote unquote oldie but goodie, everyone was leaving, and it looked so bizarre on TV. Everyone's standing up and walking out, and he's singing an old song. It was not good television from that standpoint. But they got a big rating for the Grammys. It was like sixteen million people. So, hmm. um, but they had you know like Taylor Swift was there. She didn't perform. Kelly Clarkson was there. She didn't perform. Beyonce was there. She didn't perform. I don't know. It would have been nice. Like I forget the awards, just have people sing. So. All right. Did you watch the first episode of the final season of Curb? Yes, I did okay. watch that. Spoilers knew, are coming. I had so to do you, homework. I, I knew you were okay. going to ask me about that one. Thought it was okay. Didn't think it was a great episode, but the scene in the car with Siri was the best scene of the night. In oh my, my god! Yeah, because we've all been through we've that. all been there. We've, yeah. We've all I, I love. I actually thought it was very good. I thought that there were. I don't like. I don't know if I would say I love the episode as a whole piece, right, but there were a right. lot of individual funny moments. Agreed. I thought the scene with Siri was the best scene. I love the scene when he's in the hotel, asks the guy in the hotel where something is. You know, I think he said like, "Where where do I get breakfast?" And the guy's like, yeah. "I'll walk with you." And he's like, "No, no, no, just tell me where it is." <laughs> no, no, I'll walk. and then the silence during the walk right. was so good. Dick dial. And, Leon with the dick dial was phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Those were, for me, the three highlights were those those three things. Um, This is going to be a spoiler, a major spoiler, but I was blown away by the brilliance of it. So I have to say, I got an email from a reader. I should give full credit. Let me see. I'm just going to pull it up here real quick Um, because it came in today. Here it is. Mike Rizzi. And I was blown away when I read this email. Jimmy, love the media podcast. I have a prediction on how Curb Your Enthusiasm is going to end. Spoiler, if somehow you missed the season opener. Larry is going to be found guilty of violating the, he wrote Florida, but it was the Georgia election law. The show is then going to end with him in a jail cell. It will almost be a middle finger to everyone that hated the (laughs) Seinfeld finale. I think- Be great. I think my listener, Mike Rizzi, is onto something because Jerry had teased that at one of his comedy shows that him and Larry were that they were doing something that had to do with the Seinfeld finale. So I have a funny feeling that may be what we're in store for. He ends up in the same jail cell as. That could be maybe or maybe or, you know, maybe sees Jerry walking out of jail and right. They get out. Yeah, that'd be I don't great. know if, if Mike Rizzi came up with that on his own. I have a very smart listener in the SI Media podcast world. That was good. That was brilliant. So um, what else? Oh, I thought of you right away when the NFL announced this week that the first week of the season, yeah. they're going to have a game. <laughs> Fucking Friday game. Yeah. yeah just, get, just get to it, Goodell. Play a game every fucking day of the week. I mean, oh, enough I hope so. already. Sign me up, baby. <laughs> Friday. I said, so wait, is it in addition to the Thursday or just? Yes, or, or, yes, oh, come yes, on. yes. I yes. thought maybe it was in, re- in place of the Thursday night. Over. No. 
So it's Thursday night opener. But here's here's what's sick about it. What's sick about it is they say opening week, we're going to have the Thursday night opener that airs on NBC. It'll right. be whoever wins the Super Bowl, you know, in that right. game problem. And then the next night, Friday night, the Eagles, they don't know the opponent yet, are playing a game on Friday night in Brazil. And my first thought was, oh, my God, I can't wait to get Sal's reactions. He's going to flip out. Yeah, I, I saw it and I kind of just ignored it because it makes me so angry to a point where I just assumed and maybe was hoping that they're moving Thursday to Friday, not no. in addition. No. Thursday, Friday, just take over Saturdays as well. Monday, why leave even like, OK, maybe you need a little rest on Tuesday, but just get right into it. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Why not? Sign me up. Make it like a work and week, five days a week, an- NFL. <laughs> You're annoyed now? Wait till they announce that that game is going to be on Paramount Plus only. Yeah. And what's the start time, being that it's in Brazil? Is I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know. But he said Friday night. So okay. um, I'm going to Google right now. What time is it? in? in I'm uh, not sure the Brazil. time zone on that one, but. Yeah. I'm not a time zone guy. Brazil. But, I mean, come on, bro. And, and that game. So, well, okay. So we're, oh, they're only two hours ahead of us. Oh, okay. So, so that could be like a 7 p.m. Eastern start, maybe 6 p.m. Eastern start. But I do think I, I, I reached out to the NFL about what network's going to air it, and they have not determined that yet. I've got a funny feeling that's going to be a streaming deal. Probably. Guess what? If it's a streaming deal and it doesn't involve either of the local teams, I'm out. I'm not watching it. On principle. We'll see about that. Yeah, I know. We'll see about that. It's, it's easy to say in, in February. Do you care at all in any way, shape, or form about the major controversy in the WWE with Cody Rhodes, The Rock, and Roman Reigns? You know, I actually do because I find it fascinating. I've seen it on social media, whether it be you or some of the other people that I follow. I think Sam Roberts actually has done a great job breaking it down. I, but here's the thing. I know nothing about it, just very surface stuff. So I've been trying to piece it together. And I guess, was it supposed to be Cody Rhodes so, versus Roman? Or right. wh- how did CM Punk's injury impact this? Okay, so this is what I can tell you. And, and this is pro wrestling, so you got to take everything with a grain of salt because right. you don't know. You may think you know everything, but you don't know everything. But even I heard for years about the buildup with Rock and Roman Reigns. Right. Well, okay, so they, they did build, well, they didn't really build it up, but like, People thought it was going to happen. People expected it to happen. I right. had Roman on this podcast, asked him about it a bunch of times. There was a big WrestleMania last year at SoFi. Or was that the year before? Where we thought it was going to happen, and it didn't happen because The Rock mm-hmm. has a crazy schedule because he's a massive movie star. All right. But in the meantime, the main event last year was Cody versus Roman. And everyone thought Cody was going to win because Cody right. has this great story where he was in WWE, wasn't a top guy, left, basically helped create AEW, made it a big deal, came back to WWE. He's Dusty's kids kid, and it was finished the story. And, you know, he, the angle is, you know, Dusty never got to win the WWE yep. title. Finish the story, finish the story. And everyone expected him to win last year. And the WWE didn't do that. And people were pissed. But... People also saw like, okay, build this up for a year. And then at this WrestleMania, he finishes the story and, you know, give it a year of buildup. So everyone was expecting it to be Cody versus Roman and Cody was going to win the belt finally and finish the story. He even... Right, especially after he wins the Royal Rumble. Exactly. So he wins the Royal Rumble. And from what you read, again, you don't know. It's hard, you know, but it seems like the legitimate wrestling reporters out there, it was all set in stone. Then The Rock decided this was going to be the WrestleMania. He can do his match. And I guess, you know, there's a lot of rumblings that the CM Punk injury did play a part in it because it was going to be CM Punk versus Seth Rollins and then Cody versus Roman. Seth, CM Punk wasn't even with the company three months ago. So I find it hard to believe that we're changing all these plans because of CM Punk. Like he what literally about, just got here. What but about the Vince? I don't buy that for a second. Okay. Right, there's no the way on... Maybe I'm naive. I find it hard to believe that Vince gets accused of sexual assault and and all these horrific allegations. And the WWE higher ups have a meeting and say, "Well, let's get the Rock so people forget about it." Like I just <laughs> right. don't think like it's not going to work. Like they're not going to forget about these allegations against Vince McMahon. Uh, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe, but I I would find that 
impossible to play. Plus, this is planned out. I mean, right. So, the Royal Rumble thing is really what I think convinced people it would be Cody versus Roman. Now, if you're the WWE, okay, and The Rock wants to have a match, you're not saying no. He's The Rock. Like, so how how are they going to get out of this now with well, Cody backtracking and making him look bad? So I've read it. I didn't see anything. Right. About right. I, so I've th- seen, yeah. There's a few things here. They can go through with their plan and have it be Rock versus Roman Reigns and Cody versus Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins, which will piss off the hardcore WWE fan, cause a lot of problems, and people aren't going to be happy. Because, you know, WrestleMania now is two nights. Yeah. So the other option, which is what I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're all being worked and this is all to make us look like assholes. And then they end up doing Roman versus The Rock on Saturday night. And then they could do Roman versus Cody on Sunday night. Here's the thing. Roman versus The Rock. The Rock's not going to win the belt. Right. He's not going to be like, he's not going to be the champion wrestling house shows and pay-per-views. He's a movie star. So, you know, Roman is not losing the belt to The Rock. I mean, if he does, it's going to be stupid. So, right, so wouldn't they have been better off having that match with the with Roman already stripped? Right, exactly. What they should have done is had Cody versus Roman at Wrestle, WrestleMania, have Cody win the belt, and then The Rock can wrestle Roman Reigns at SummerSlam for the head of the table. Rock versus Roman does not need the belt right, right. at all. They're wrestling, fact, for the head of the, they're wrestling for the head of the table. So the way out of it is Rock, Roman, Saturday, Roman wins, Roman, Cody, Sunday, Cody now, wins the belt. What about a pay per view before then? Is there anything that's before WrestleMania or not? Yeah, but the whole point is people wanted to see Cody win the belt at WrestleMania. That's finishing the story because last year we thought it was going to happen, and it it takes something away if it's not at WrestleMania. The way they did it though was so bad. It was on SmackDown. He comes out and he says, "Oh, you know, I won the Royal Rumble, but I'm not going to take my match at WrestleMania." Well, like no reason why. Like it, yeah, the storyline well, yeah. of it made it was not. That was a well, pro- the storyline makes Cody no tweet, sense. Didn't Cody tweet something like "Trust me"? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, that maybe they'll do the two nights and he'll get his shot on. So there's rumblings about because they're having a big press conference in Vegas on Thursday, so this yeah. is going to be outdated. But there's big rumblings on Thursday that like The Rock and Roman are going to sign the contract, and then Cody's going to come out and say, "I'm taking my Royal Rumble match," and then it's going to be two nights. Who I don't know, you know how okay. it plays out. But I'm torn because nobody loves The Rock more than me. That's been established. I love Roman. He's on the pot all the time. Nicest guy. And I love Cody. I, I'm, I'm like, and I'm, you know, this is not really, you know, I'm in my 40s yeah. here getting upset about this. But I could hear, and so are a lot of other people. I could hear yeah. you. You want to see Cody win. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. Right. And Rock and Roman doesn't need to be for the belt. Cody needs the belt. And it has to be at WrestleMania. You know who you, just should, has you, know, you know who you should get on to talk about this? Who? Jim Cornette. <laughs> Oh my God! I, then I'd never get a WWE super. Like I'm nervous even talking Don't about this. I'm, shit. Kids think uh, he'd be going. Oh my God! Brett thinks he's an actual champion. Oh he, my God! He listen. <laughs> whenever, whenever, whenever I'm having bad shit go on in life and I need a laugh, I just put on the Jim Cornette Montreal Screwjob video. <laughs> oh my God! And I'm good to go so for great. 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I already feel nervous. Like I got, I'm saying all this, and then I got to call WWE and be like, "Can I get Cody on the podcast?" I'm gonna be like, "Go fuck yourself." But yeah, um, listen, it's the WWE's fault. They did a phenomenal job building Cody. The right. reason we all feel this way about Cody is because of how the WWE built it and what Cody did. So, plus, listen, I'm a total whore. Like, if you come on the podcast and you're great, and I feel like we have a great conversation, I'm rooting for you. Give me Cody winning the belt. As soon as he came on, I'm like, he's great. I mean, he didn't tweet the podcast when he was on both times, but mm-hmm. all right, I'll figure that. But give me, you know, Roman's great. He comes on. The Rock hasn't been on, so maybe that's why I'm not into The Rock winning. But I, you know, but whatever. I keep checking to see if The Rock unfollows me every time I say we want Cody. <laughs> I doubt he's looking at the mm-hmm. tweets from anybody on this timeline. You know, you would think people should not ever look at tweets. Who, like The Rock is someone who. Should never look at a tweet. He's the rock. But how about, did, okay, so like the Dan Orlovsky thing this week, might as well get into oh, this for a second. Yeah, he's so sensitive. Well, listen, I think I can't, I'm not going to fault the guy for being upset that someone called him a scrub on his own network. You know, you'd like a little, 
If it's someone on another network, he might not care. But the guy's on ESPN every day, and he's really good at what he does. He had a great video. I put it in Train of Thoughts, but showing about the Chiefs' offense, how they run this right. three wide receivers on this end, how they're going to kill the Niners with this play. It was but brilliant. Why, but why but, take yourself so seriously then? Dog didn't rip him as an analyst, which he is great at. He is here's if why. not the best. He's one of the best. Listen, I I think Dog was 100% kidding, trying to be funny, trying to be entertaining. He meant no malice whatsoever. But I also see the side of it where, like, if you're Dan Orlovsky, you're in the NFL for 12 years, you got a guy on your own network calling, I think the word scrub. Like, if Dog would have been like, oh, he wasn't even that good, I don't think Orlovsky would. The word scrub is harsh, I think. He ran, and, he ran out of the back of the end zone on a okay, play. Okay, I mean... Well, here's what I was going to say about this, what's, what I found fascinating. So I posted the video that Orlovsky replied yeah, you started to and said, this shit. You started I, know. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I didn't think he, but here's, but, but this is my point about me starting this. Did not tag or at mention Orlovsky. Right. And he doesn't follow me on Twitter. How did he see the video? Good question. Well, I mean, I'm sure people it got it played because it was, see, that's the thing that was funny. Like I would have liked, and I do like Orlovsky. I would have liked to have seen him. Like, did he have to say classless? He can go back at dog and and have some fun with him and rip him for certain things. But like, it felt like he took it so seriously. Where, dude, the reality is, in relative comparison to others, like you wore a scrub. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. He made right. the NFL. I get it. He's a great analyst. Well, come on, stop taking yourself so seriously. I don't disagree with you, but I see his standpoint of it. I think if you're you were a professional athlete, this word scrub hits you in a certain way. That's what I think. And I you know, I I, I think also he responded to that tweet. Again, I don't know how he saw it, but he responded to it immediately. So in that heat of the moment, like I think if you said to him now, two days later, I, and he oh, here's the other thing about this. He's on with dog today at five thirty. Oh, okay. There you go. So they're fine. Yeah. So dog, yeah. Dog, so, dog will give the old, you know, we love you, pal. Right. I exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think it was just his initial reaction to like an e like he's looking at ESPN, his own network, and the word scrub hit him a certain way. I so I don't it. fault I him for that. It. But again, too, if you listen, you and I, we know dog. If you don't know dog, you don't understand. Like it's right. You know. So, I know. I get it. Yeah. Um. The Boomer and Geo thing this week was phenomenal. Booking oh the wrong Randy God. Moss. Well, give me some it. internal WFAN reaction to that. I we, everybody around here thinks it's hilarious. The guys it is. behind the scenes that stay back were telling me about it. They emailed me uh, the clip. They're like, "You got to hear this." I watched it twice yesterday in its entirety. It is. It's so good. The moment where Geo realizes it, and I was like, "No, that's it's priceless to me." It was so fucking great. Well, what made it great is how they found out because Geo, yeah, for people who are maybe around the country may not know, so Boomer and Geo morning show on WFAN in New York, but also they're on CBS Sports Network across the country. Geo's a big Vikings fan. Yeah. So he's talking about how he packed shit to, <laughs> to bring to Vegas for Randy Moss to sign and then says to the producer, Al Dukes, he goes, oh, by the way, what is, because everyone who comes on any show during this horrific yeah. week is promoting something. He goes, so what's he, what's he promoting? And Al Duke said something about horse racing. And that's when it clicked. It was the way they found out that made it. Oh, as Gio said, now it turned out to be very funny. But Gio yeah. was like, man, if I didn't say anything, this guy would have showed up. And Al would have been like, oh, where's Randy Moss? And he would be like, I am Randy Moss. And right. I would have been like, you're not Randy right. Moss. Oh, man. Right. It, it could have been even funnier. But it was so great. It was. I, I think this may have been just as funny. Because here you have Gio talking about how he packs stuff. <laughs> For the guy to sign. Yeah. And then just casually, very casually, he's like, oh, what's he coming on to promote? <laughs> and Al Duke says horse racing and Boomer and Gio are like, you know, this is Randy Moss who covers horse racing. And Al's trying to blame the PR people. Right. That's on right. Al. Right. Al, you got to right. read the whole email. Like, I love Al and it's funny. But well, as soon as he read the email on the air and as soon as it said NBC analyst, you got to know that's not. <laughs> right. That's not. Randy Moss is on Randy ESPN. Moss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last thing here before we go, Super Bowl betting, wagering. I know you're clean right now. I don't know if you're going to dip in, but if you didn't dip in, like give me what it's it's the Niners. Are they still too, let me get the line here on draft. I'm but what, rooting, yeah, I'm going to root for the Niners. I think they've been the better team all year long. Uh, I think the Niners are going to win the Super Bowl. Um, okay, I've been betting against the Chiefs. I've been pick, or picking, betting, picking against Chiefs. 
all playoff long, I'm going to go down with the ship one more ride. I can't go against – I can't go with them now after picking against them all all playoff long, so I'm going to pick the Niners in this one. Will you bet – so you'll do minus two uh, if you were betting? If you were betting. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't so like, love the idea of laying laying points. I'd rather get it at a minus one or maybe tease it. You, you tease it down well, me, and have some fun with it, but I think the Niners are going to win. The, I'd bet the Niners if I had to bet anything, yeah. The money line is only minus 122. Then I would do that if it's only minus 122. Just pick the winner, and okay. away we go. I'm going to bet the Chiefs. All right. I mean, I understand why. I get it. I'm going to bet the Chiefs. I, You know, it used to be fun. Like, I would used to, like, I would give you, like, 50 prop bets. Like, but, like, I feel like every site, every podcast, yeah. everybody does it now. It's, like, so, yeah. I don't know. All the fun's been taken out of it. By all right. these stragglers coming in. Oh, prop bet. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it now. We used to have fun with it, but um, I'll probably bet a couple of Mahomes props, some Christian McCaffrey props, but I'm going to bet the Chiefs. And Now, what's the plan to, to watch the game? I'll be home. It's our last um, time in, you know, in the setup. This is it. Last football game with the theater downstairs is... You know, getting ready to move, and uh, and that's it. So I'll have my well, family over and watch it. Well, you, oh, the family will be over. Okay. Yeah. So you get the sister and mom and all yeah, that. Yeah, my sister, okay. her kids, my mom. Yeah. What are we doing for food? Uh, we have to discuss that. My mother, like, I'm, I'm talking to my sister. I'm like, let's not do too much. Wings, pizza, maybe. My mom's already like, nobody talk to me. I'm bringing ziti. I'm, br-. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, we don't need a full tray of big ziti, mom. And then my sister will make some stuff. And then we order pizza, and, and it's too much. I'd rather have the ziti than the pizza and wings. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, I, I know, but it's just that, like, I'll, Ma, I'll talk to you when I get around to it. We'll see what you can make. You know, right? I'll take the ziti, I guess, but we don't need too much. Well, skip the wings and the pizza. Just have the ziti. What do you got? You'll be home. Yeah, because I gotta listen. You know, I gotta write about yeah, Nance and Romo the next day, so I can't have it. You know, I, I gotta be able to listen. I gotta listen, and I'm not DVRing uh, that bullshit. Yeah, I is not. I, I gotta be in in live. So. I get it. Um, all right. Any house update before we go? Funny you should ask. Oh, shit. Breaking oh, news. Oh, my God. I'm nervous. We went, um, I think it was last Saturday, and saw a house that we had seen before. Remember the house that I told you that we saw that we – they accepted the offer, but then they like it was contingent on them selling. Yeah. We saw that house the same time as we saw this house, and we liked that house better and kind of ignored this house and it felt went off the market, whatever. Got an email saying or a text from our agent saying, Hey, this could be the break you're looking for. This house, something fell apart. It's back on the market. And we're like, eh, we didn't love it enough last time. Let's go see it. We saw it. We loved it better this time. I don't know why that is. Maybe because there's no furniture or whatever in there. You've been, you've been beaten to a pulp. That's yeah, why. right. Yeah, maybe desperation. Everything yeah. looks better. You know. Yeah. yeah. yeah be, the uh, the beer goggles. What do you want to say? Three a.m. Everything looks better at the club. Exactly. Yeah. But we made an offer. We were waiting to hear back. It was accepted. Wow. And now we can begin the process like a normal but accepted buyer. and it's done and it's finished and you're moving. But, you have a but this this has it's not contingent on them selling anything. Like it's done as far as they sold list of the house. We made an offer, no bidding award, nonsense, bull crap. We made a significant offer over the S, but whatever. We we got the all we got the acceptance, they uh and, and we're going into contract now. I feel like Shelby should insert Cool in the Gang celebration right here for people. Now, what is, what is, so give me like, what's the next step? So actually, just before I got on the phone with you, I was talking to the lawyer. They sent over the agreement, whatever. They, we got to, the, the lawyers now talk about the actual contract. It goes into, right now, I think it's an attorney review. Attorney review. Then one okay. all is good there then we are technically in contract. Then you have to get the inspections done and all that stuff. But because the sellers are already out of the house and looking to sell, this should happen. And we're ready to buy and we need to be out by the end of March. This should happen within a three-week time frame. Oh, okay. So this is, a, all right. We got a big three-week, all right, three weeks, three weeks. Yeah. So at the end of the three weeks, all the pay, that, that's when you would physically move? Correct. Like, like actually own the house and be able to move in. 
We probably many, won't move in until the end of March, but we should be in possession of a new house in Jersey by hopefully the beginning of March. I wish we had a live audience right now. Like I wish, you know, when like <laughs> podcast, you know, when podcasts do like live shows, because if we had an audience and this was a live show, I'd go like this to the crowd right now. Just give me, give me a round of applause. Who out there thinks Sal set this whole thing up so he would get this house when the football season ended and he could get the full season in his house, in his basement theater set up. And this was maybe planned out by how convenient the football season ends. Oh, we have a house now. Unbelievable. And we have to be out by the end of March. So that window that was basically shrunk to like, oh, we're screwed. We did catch a bit of a break. It's a happy ending. And it's funny. I didn't think you were going to bring it up today. And I had it. I was going to be like, what? No, no update on that. No, you're not going to okay. ask me about the house. Of all the weeks, this is the one asking yeah. me about the house. We got breaking huh? news. By the way, I haven't said this on the air yet either. So you are breaking news here. I'm a good host. I dragged it out and made everyone listen to the end. <laughs> that dick move that hosts do. I, you know. Oh, we yeah. have big news, but we're going to save it for the end. You know. Yeah, so the tease, yeah. the old tease. Yeah. Well, I, we had a lot of topics, but that's a good, good ending. Good ending. Yeah. All right. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Let's get you through now the next three weeks. Yeah. Um, I'll keep you posted. I'm a little, I'm still shook from your ridiculous Travis Kelsey take. Oh, stop it. And Cody Rhodes better be in the main event at WrestleMania. That's the recap of this segment. <laughs> All right, Sal, take it easy. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, my many, many thanks to Jim Nance. Appreciate him coming on in this busy week. My thanks to Sal Licata, as always. And just a quick reminder, if you missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, make sure you dip into the archives. Give those a listen as soon as you can. Great episodes, great guests in recent weeks. Brian Curtis from The Ringer last week. Kyle Brandt from Good Morning Football two weeks ago. Kevin Burkhart, Greg Olson three weeks ago. So give those a listen. Subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Leave a review on Apple if you can. And enjoy the Super Bowl. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and take care.